Today's video, my IBM 5150 paired with an AMDEC monochrome monitor and a Hercules graphics card. We review old technology from games to all PCs and don't forget the dog. We do those old gadgets and electronics. We cover it all. So, you know, I've kind of covered the subject matter of this particular video before. I have done a full video on my IBM 5150. Uh, looking at this machine and different configurations, more of a stock configuration, and I did at one point have this upgraded uh, quite a bit. Uh, since that time I have decided I kind of want to go with more of a, not necessarily a stock, but something like a reasonable, tasteful upgrade maybe for like the late or mid 80s for this machine. Uh, I have talked about the Hercules graphics cards before, I did a full video on those. Uh, but I didn't quite do one with it in the 5150. And I've also kind of tied in this monitor, uh, which is something I've recently acquired. It's a nice Amdec 310A, like amber monochrome monitor. And I just kind of wanted, I guess you, this could almost be like an update video, but I wanted to pull all these elements together and just kind of make a, another video on this subject and just taking a relook or taking a look uh, now at the IBM and taking a look specifically at this cool uh, amber screen monochrome monitor uh, with the Hercules graphics card installed. So um, I guess the first thing we should do for this video is do I'll do a real quick recap on my 5150, how it's configured. Take a look inside. We'll talk about the Hercules card for a minute. We'll, like, we'll talk about the Am this uh, Amdeck uh, monitor for a minute and then we'll just show some games on it. Uh, probably a pretty quick, uh, well, relatively short video, comparatively, uh, but we'll see. So I have done a video specifically on this 5150, the IBM 5150, in the past, uh, but I figure we'll do a quick refresher. Now I do have this Model F. I believe this is the actual keyboard that was with this machine stock, and so it's like the correct keyboard. I don't know if in the original video I had this keyboard, but yeah, this is the Model F. Mine's in pretty decent shape, fully working. Uh, I think I mentioned earlier, I kind of went with uh, like a, a tasteful upgrade at one point, and I get, if you go back and watch the original video I, I just do on this 5150, I, I, I upgraded it a lot, and we had like a hard drive in it, and all kind of different cards and stuff. Uh, I had like a half, half height hard drive, I think, or I know I, I had a 720k floppy drive and stuff. It was just, it was upgraded pretty well, but I kind of dialed it back, and uh, it's definitely not stock, but it's just kind of like more mild upgrades. I, I got rid of the hard drive, which... I don't know, I sometimes debate whether I should have done that. It was just like a big MFM drive. Um, it's a very useful upgrade. Uh, and I, I, I think I had upgraded the power supply to support the hard drive. I think I put this back in... I don't... I'm not sure. Maybe this is still the upgraded power supply. But anyways, I did take out the hard drive. Uh, I don't really use this machine enough to, to justify it anyways. Uh, there is a memory expansion card. I think this is like an AST memory expansion card. So we do have the full 640K of memory. And uh, other than that, uh, math coprocessors are in there. They're cheap as chips. Um, not that you ever really use it. And then I do have a color uh, a CGA card for connecting to a CGA monitor. And then this wasn't in here when I originally did the video on it, and that is the Hercules card, and that's kind of what we're talking about today. So, sort of, you know, a tasteful, sort of mild upgrade. Uh, this is the kind of upgrade you could have seen uh, in the 80s for a, a 5150. Not too ridiculous. Uh, so, uh, let me just pull out this Hercules card really quick, and we'll take a look at it. Now, note that on a 5150, a CGA card and a either just a monochrome or a Hercules can live together side by side. Generally what you do is you set their switches on here, you set it for CGA, and you can actually have two hooked up at once. And then you can, it will boot up on the CGA card and then you use a command, I think it's like mono, and it will switch over to the uh, monochrome card. And you can actually have both monitors running at once and you can switch, not simultaneously, but you can use the command to switch back between them. Uh, 
for right for right now I actually just have this thing set to monochrome so the CGA cards in there but I don't think the computer actually even knows it's there so we should be purely running off this Hercules card so here is my Hercules graphics card monochrome graphics card this one I believe is the 1988 revision I believe there are earlier versions of the Hercules there's also various clone cards uh, Hercules clone cards this is kind of like the original monochrome monitors that uh, has the monochrome monitor connection, but it also works as a, I think that's like a parallel port there. So, so I don't know the full story on this card, but I believe it was developed by someone in, in Thailand because um, they had a monochrome monitor and the monochrome cards didn't support the Thai language. I believe that's how the story goes. So he created this card to display the uh, Thai, you know, language symbols, but it also ended up being able to display graphics on a uh, on a monochrome monitor so you could have a mon with one of these cards you could have a monochrome monitor and you could get uh, graphics on it actually and I believe it also can emulate CGA so if you have a CGA game this will uh, emulate the CGA in like shades of monochrome so very useful very interesting card there are a good number of games that directly support Hercules mode and you know it was a big help for people that just wanted to game and all they had was a monochrome monitor so uh, I'm gonna reinstall this guy and then we'll take a look at the Amdeck monitor that I have so I'm filming this out of order so you may have already noticed that the screen is gone but as of right now me filming this part uh, that protective sort of screen that mesh screen is still on there and I think this is like an anti-glare screen uh, it does lower the brightness but um, yeah it does help with glare now if you look right here you can see a spot where it's lighter and that's where there's I have a tear in the screen here and I mean it's not really affecting functionality except I'm gonna have this weird bright kind of weird tear spot in the middle so I think what I'm gonna do I'm just going to remove this screen on most of these monitors at this point the screen is long gone anyways it's it's kind of a small wonder that the screens actually still on there at all uh, but it is a little distracting so I am going to remove it uh, I'm in this room with no windows anyways, so I'm not really worried about glare and things like that. So uh, it will be a little brighter, so I'm just going to remove the uh, screen. Alright, well I got most of it off. There's still a little, like a stubborn little strip of it here and here. Um, it's giving me a little bit difficulty tearing off. But yeah, it looks fine obviously without the screen. A little bit brighter. I actually was able to turn down the brightness a little bit, which is good for the monitor overall. Uh, but yeah, it's 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 fine without this this screen. So if you, obviously, if you have to rip in it or something, I wouldn't be afraid to tear it off. Well, that looks a little bit better. I kind of had to take a hobby knife and go around the edges and then do a lot of like snipping and trimming. Like you can see here, there's still some remnants of you know that nylon uh, mesh, but I think we've got most of it. It's it's pretty much acceptable uh, at least to, for me right now. Uh, but yeah, it's like I said, there's still remnants. It's kind of annoying to get that all out. Unless there's a trick um, I don't know about. I'm not really uh, well uh, versed in removing nylon screens from CRT monitors. So if any of you guys know like a little trick that I can do to get the last of this and get it like cleaned up nice, um, that would be helpful. But I I'm fine with it right now. I, I have got probably like 95 plus percent uh, of it. So here's the monitor uh, itself with the nylon screen removed. Uh, this is the MDAC Video 310A. I believe these were fairly common. Um, I don't know the exact date. There might be a manufacturing date on the back, but I've, I've only come across one uh, through my adventures picking up old computers. But that doesn't necessarily mean anything because I've only so there's there's plenty of fairly common things that maybe I've only come myself have come across one of so that doesn't really prove anything uh, but this is the only one I've ever come across it was at a swap meet uh, there has a cool little uh, power LED there to turn it on you pull out this knob this is also your brightness control and then you have a contrast control very sort of 80s retro look to it beige here uh, here's the connector uh, it is a monochrome monitor so uh, connect it to the right monochrome card uh, there and then it does have one of these power connectors that kind of piggybacks 
Uh, it's kind of annoying when you have this because it kind of limits what you can use it to. There might be adapters, I think, but uh, yeah, right out, right from the start here when you have these, uh, you have to have certain machines with these power supplies that have dual, where you plug it in here, and then you plug in the main power supply here. Now, they're also very convenient because it doesn't take up another uh, socket on your power strip or from your wall. So, yeah, in, in that way, it is very convenient. And you just kind of plug it in here. And then when you, you can even set it so you keep the monitor, monitor powered on. And then, like, when you power on the computer, it will automatically power on the monitor. So it, it can be very convenient or inconvenient depending on what equipment you have. So, yeah, looking on the back here, it looks like we have a uh, manufacture date of March 1988. So this is an 80s monitor, late 80s. And not too much back here, but we do have a couple more adjustments here. Uh, looks like vertical hold, vertical something else, vertical size, and horizontal center. Um, so, yeah, there are some adjustments, but I think they're like pod adjustments. You have to put a little screwdriver in there and turn them to adjust things. But it's nice that they're there. As far as these dedicated monochrome monitors go, you had several colors. There were really three main colors. You had your green phosphor ones, which we're all familiar with. Uh, that was by far the most common one where it was green. Then we had these amber screen ones like the Amdec 310. Uh, these were also pretty common, but not nearly as common as the green screen ones. And then there was also black and white. And then there's also color monitors, like my Amdec 600, that are CGA monitors, but they had a little button that would put them into, like, a mono mode. Um, I think mine filters actually green, amber, and then a different kind of green. And if you go on the internet, there's a lot of different debate on uh, which one is people's favorite and which one is better for you. Now, looking at some of these online polls and whatnot, it seems like the majority of people like the classic uh, green monochrome monitor. But there are people like myself, I actually slightly kind of prefer these uh, amber screen monitors. Now there's a lot of information or misinformation out there on like why they switch to different kind of color or different kind of monochrome monitors. Uh, there's a number of people that just, just prefer the amber, it's just different. Uh, they say it's a little easier on the eyes. There's also some other claims out there, like they switch from green to like amber monochrome because they found out that people staring at the bright green monochrome monitors was turning people colorblind. Uh, I don't really think there's much validity at all to that. I don't know where that uh, came from. Uh, I can't find any truth to that at all. Uh, it seems a little bit out there. Um, I've also seen claims that the green screen monitors were the most common simply because the human eye... Uh, sees green better than the other colors and it just stood out better and actually the green screen was better on the eyes again I cannot confirm that it seems like maybe there's some validity to that but I don't know I think the best uh, reason I found that the green monochrome monitors stuck around and were the most popular or at least the most reasonable one is it was simply the first monochrome monitor that came out uh, so it was like the cheapest and easiest to produce they had already been doing it for years the process was already down and it was just easy and cheap to me that seems like the most reasonable opinion why we had green uh, phosphor monitors most common uh, but yeah like I said you'll you'll see a bunch of different things uh, really it's up to personal taste I like I said I slightly prefer the amber over the green but it really depends on you and your eyes and just what colors you prefer. Okay, so uh, I think I'll start with Airborne Ranger here. And loading up Airborne Ranger, you can see it goes straight to a select graphics mode. And if we go all the way to the bottom, it actually directly supports Hercules graphics mode. I can see there's like an outline. The one thing I have noticed with these Hercules graphics modes, um, for whatever reason, they tend to not take up the whole screen. Uh, I'm not sure if it's just th that's a resolution thing or just some kind of limitation where it's usually like it, where usually it just can't take the full screen there. Uh, but let me see. so we have our little paratrooper it actually looks nice and sharp and yeah, airborne rangers.
Okay, so I think first thing is you drop a little, um, it's like your supply bag. You drop it somewhere, you drop it right there, and then you get to a certain zone, and then you have to parachute out. It's been a very long time since I played this. I used to just play the Commodore 64 version. There we are. And slowly, I lied down. So unfortunately, I came down right next to a bunker, and I don't remember, I can rotate um, and fire, but I don't actually remember how to, uh oh, here comes the guy. Oh, I at least killed someone. I don't remember how to move forward. I should have, guess I should have refreshed with the instruction manual. So here you can see this is the intro to the original wizardry. Um, now, I've never, actually never seen this game in monochrome. I've always played this game on um, like a CGA monitor in CGA mode. And yeah, it is exceptionally sharp on this monitor. And that's the thing with monochrome monitors. Um, because it has to do with color monitors have uh, three pixels, uh, more or less. Again, I might be getting the exact technical aspects wrong. Uh, on a color monitor, I guess for every like dot or a pixel, again, don't know if that's the correct terminology here, you're going to have three dots that make up the three, uh, three colors, and then with those three colors, it can create other colors, where as a monochrome monitor, like each pixel is one dot, uh, since it's all the same color. So you tend to get uh, much sharper images. That's part of the reason monochrome monitors were preferred for businesses that mostly dealt with text, because it was much sharper, uh, easier on the eyes. Yeah, this is exceptionally sharp. This looks fantastic, actually. Um, do I prefer this over color? I mean, I see in color. I don't see in monochrome. I, I, I do prefer color, uh, even if you lose a little bit of that sharpness. So, yes, personally, I prefer color, but th this is actually really nice, it, especially for a game like Wizardry, where, I mean, you have monster graphics, but not a whole lot, uh, mostly just straight lines and stuff. So for wizardry, this might be a, a better option, maybe. Um, I don't know. Um, I'm not sure. I mean, like I said, there's very few like actual like graphics in the game. It's mostly like wireframe and text. So monochrome might be way to go for wizardry. Not not 100% sure. It's a lot of it's up to personal taste. Again. You can see it's not taking up the full screen. Again, with this Hercules card, it sort of smishes the image a little bit. I don't know, smash or smishes uh, isn't probably the, the good term to use, but it does seem like it does take up a lesser uh, part of the screen here. But yeah, that is, that looks exceptionally good. Let me see if I can, yeah, there we go. Zoom in a little bit. Um, yeah, that looks really super nice. Uh, I've been playing this game very slowly over the years. It's very difficult on my uh, Tandy 1000 with a CGA monitor, but man, this is this almost, I'm almost tempted to just play Wizardry on this monochrome monitor. I'm not sure. So the last game I want to take a look at is Vet, uh, just because it's a little different. We've got a racing game to throw in there. And I also have old footage of this game running on the, this Hercules card on a uh, green monochrome monitor. So if I can pull out that footage, I can put them side by side. And maybe we can do a little bit, little bit of a uh, comparison. And the one thing, cool thing about this game is it actually has... Uh, two Hercules modes. Well, it has two CGA modes and two Hercules modes. There's regular and Hercules with reverse color, but uh, 
Let's just go with the regular, regular Hercules mode. So uh, one thing I forgot is when I did do the old video and I played VET on the uh, green monitor, green phosphor monitor, it was a IBM monitor I believe, I forgot we played the game on like a 286 so the gameplay is much faster so keep that in mind on the amber screen we're just playing on a stock 5150 at 4.77 megahertz. I think when it was on the green screen it was, it was a 286 so it was much faster so the amber screen, when you're looking at it, is going to be much, much slower. Uh, arguably, the game isn't really playable at that speed. It's actually under the recommended speed uh, requirements on the box. It, the speed obviously has nothing to do with the monitors. That is the, the computer it's running on. But it does give us a contrast. We can see how the game will look on either. Now, there's more ghosting on the green screen uh, monitor, but I think that's just because it's moving faster, so the image is sort of refreshing quicker, so you're going to get more uh, ghosting, or I think it's called like persistence issues. Uh, so, that's also not, also not a good example of like, hey, the amber screen has less uh, persistence issues or ghosting. Um, so don't take it like that. This is just like a fun visual looking at them side by side. Like, which one hurts your eyes? more. Uh, again, it, it's not the greatest comparison, but it's what I have at the moment. As for persistence or ghosting, um, I, I don't know. To my eyes, it kind of feels like maybe the Amdeck 310 in amber is less so than the IBM Green Phosphor uh, monitor. I don't necessarily know if that just has to do with the colors or the phosphors um, specifically. I mean, you might have a Green Phosphor monitor that has really good persistence. Uh, or not very much ghosting, uh, depending maybe to the manufacturer. I don't know for sure. Let us know in the comments what you think on that issue. Uh, what monitor, what monochrome monitors do you prefer? Um, what's your opinion between the amber and the green phosphor monitors? So that was a brief uh, revisit or look again at my old uh, IBM 5150, now with uh, paired with a nice Amdec 310A amber screen monochrome moni monitor. And uh, yeah, it's a cool setup. I do, I, I like the look uh, of the official IBM monitor a little bit better. Obviously it was designed to aesthetically go with the 5150 and I think it does that great. I don't think this the look of this Amdec monitor too clashes too much. It, it looks appropriate. In my opinion just not as good as the official IBM monitor uh, cosmetically. Uh, talking about the screen and everything, I mean it's about the same experience. You're just you're just getting a different color instead of green phosphor you're getting amber and um, you know it really depends on what you personally prefer. It's very, very close, but I think I I barely maybe prefer the amber. It just feels a little bit less straining on my eyes, but just ever so slightly. Of course, we've uh, already looked at that Hercules graphic card in a separate video, but we're looking at that again. Officially installed in my 5150. Great card, nice little card. Back in the day, if all you had was a monochrome monitor, uh, it was really nice if you wanted to do some uh, gaming on the side. You didn't want to spring for... Uh, fancy newfangled color monitor. And that's about it. Just kind of an overview, relook at some of these uh, things we looked at previously separately, all put together in this cool little package here. Very cool uh, 80s kind of setup here. This is really, we're rocking the 80s with our 5150 and the Amdeck. 
uh, really cool setup. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any comments or questions, especially as it pertains to the Hercules card or these uh, monochrome monitors, uh, please put your comment below. I read every comment. Uh, don't necessarily reply to them all, but I assure you I do read them all. Uh, so thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.